Welcome to the Going Green podcast. Today we're going to have another look at recycling because there's been a new report out from the UN about recycling. And so we thought we ought to sort of have another little delve into recycling. And basically, I suppose what we're looking at is a, a little question that says, well, recycling alone isn't going to be enough, is it? Yeah, the, 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 the UN reported you know, on this. They The UN have released a roadmap, this new plan that uh, every country should um, basically um, sign on to to actually help remove, according to their plan, 80% of all plastic by 2040. Sounds very good. And it's not removing plastic as in, you know, let's all move to bamboo or something silly like that. No, it's actually more about, as I say, recycling, but it's also about reusing and creating or getting countries to adopt a circular approach to plastic waste or just the plastics in general because there are there are loads of plastics and there are loads more chemicals in plastics and one of the the big problems seems to be with plastics that uh, sometimes when you actually recycle plastics uh, quite a lot of sort of bad things are actually made and released and in fact there does seem to be quite a lot of microplastics released when many plastics are recycled. So recycling alone isn't enough. We we can recycle plastics again and again and again, but perhaps there is only so many times you can actually recycle plastics. Now, that's not to say <clears throat> uh, uh, not to use plastics as we were mentioning if you take a say a water bottle and its product life cycle is of course that obviously you drink the water at the water bottle and then you throw it away if you can fill it with water for a, they said something daft like another eight times you've increased that the water bottle's life um product life uh, by three times or something hilarious like, like that, as in, you know, you're making, uh, where you could be buying a water bottle three times, you've actually used this one, and you can actually then save on buying a water bottle, you know, three more times. And and it, it's, it's one of those lovely things where, you know, is the water bottle designed to be able to be used three more times? And the answer is they are now. They, originally... They weren't. We're not saying them, but now they are actually able to be used for three, you know, up to sort of eight fills, if that makes any sense of the water bottle. But other plastics have very similar, because it's, it's the durability of the plastics we're more talking about. They can withstand sort of being used for eight uses of the plastic as opposed to, you know, how many times can you throw something in a microwave? That, that, you know, that sort of thing. You know, it, it's, it's those sort of use cases we're talking about as opposed to anything else. So some, I, I, I know I'm not very keen on actually using sort of bottled water because um, it, it's the, the plastics they actually use, it's, it's not the actual plastic, it's all the additives to make it softer and have all the particular properties that you want in the plastic. And some of those leak out into the water. You know, they leach out into the water, and therefore you're drinking some of that plastic. And that doesn't really inspire me an awful lot to drink bottled water. Um, that's, that's a problem, I find, but it is getting better. Yeah, the, the, the answer to the, the as it, the, the, the bottled water might have actually technically been a bad uh, example, but it actually showed the, the use case of trying to reuse plastics uh, wherever they can and that the product lifestyle or life cycle, as they like to call it, is actually much longer than you think or they can withstand a longer life than usually they are used. 
However, it doesn't matter in what point of the life cycle you recycle it, as in you, you know, it gets processed back in, because of course it, you know, because of they done all the lovely science to make it more durable, to, you know, adding all these extra chemicals in that leak. Yeah, you know, there's a whole sort of system in place that, you know, you look at if you know, yes, these microplastics are leaking into you, but they're not toxic. They just don't. Re- get away you know leave you so it's one of those odd things where you're just filling yourself up with gunk but you don't deal with it but you don't it doesn't harm you so is there a major problem of you filling yourself up with gunk glance over that one at all well i don't know if i would glance over that so i i just don't agree with doing that there are plastics you can buy that are much sort of safer to use and so you can go and buy a water bottle that you can use maybe hundreds of times but or or even more so it it some some of this is about choice isn't it you know, you can choose to use containers made of this or something else and if you're using containers basically made of plastic then think about reusing them if you're using containers made of something else, then why don't you recycle those as well? Why don't you reuse? And I think this is the important bit to start with. You buy something and you shouldn't think of ever buying something once for a one use. You've got to think about when you buy something, right, what else can I use it for? Let's let just take it um throwing it away from the bottle water into say let's take a lovely rucksack yeah we're talking something that you use day in day out to carry something but of course look at how many things you can carry or how many different things you can carry in that rucksack and that yeah you know, how long does a rucksack last uh, and the answer is that's the sort of thing we're looking at in terms of um, uh, the the recycling in terms of the roadmap to reducing plastic waste is that this rucksack oh what if a little bit was made from um recycled material oh then we're getting exciting there uh you know and sort of you're looking at the lifespan and sort of going through all of it to the end and it could be last you know it could have lasted you sort of 10 hopefully 15 years in which case then it's actually not doing bad but any more years and that's wonderful in regards to not putting in or not requiring new plastic to be made or even to be created to have for you to have a rucksack so that that's what they're really talking to and the 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 idea of this, this roadmap this plan which was done at the sort of the fifth world um environmental um policy conference uh which is one of those things where i was surprised by the fifth but at the same it's not the fifth un meeting but it's the fifth environmental policy yeah. unit meeting so we'll glance over and they're expected to have released this report and they're expecting to get all the signatories from all 193 countries uh, who were opened into this, who agreed initially to the framework to sign up by this um, next year. And then suddenly it's them propelling all this thing forward. And, it, and it, it's, uh, you know, they've got lots of facts and graphs in this report, and it's quite good. But it's one of those things where they were looking at the three scenarios of what if nothing changed, as in we kept on where we're going, which is, you know, um, the worst case scenario and then it was sort of in the perfect world this is what we you know and that sort of you know and then they said sort of you know we want to be modeling the perfect we might not get there so what is the sort of where do we need to get to before you know towards the perfect well, world they're trying to basically end all plastic pollution by 2040 which is you know quite a sort of a thing when they basically haven't really started yet. Uh, we have got this idea of circularity. That's that's the that's the word, isn't that's it? That's their buzzword. Yeah. Yes. And basically, this is a lovely word 
with no widely accepted definition. But basically, this idea is to try and have a zero pollution plastics economy. And basically, that's going to eliminate the need for any unnecessary production, any consumption, and avoids any sort of real negative impacts on all the different ecosystems. Yeah, well, and, and of course, there's more talking about it's that obviously the health. Yeah. Uh, there's the sort of less pollution. And one of the dumb things they were talking about, of course, is if you're using less chemicals, then there are less chemical pollution out in the world, as in less, you know, smog, those sorts of things. So it, it's one of those things where they estimate that it could be worth, or this plan could be worth $1.27 trillion in savings. You go, okay. And the answer is, so it's not new money being made. It's how much uh, money not being spent that could be put towards other things. If you plan on oh, doing putting money elsewhere, then, oh, you know, we could afford things like, a, a, I don't know, a new train or new buses or, you know, yeah, what else? As opposed to having to fork out money on constantly having to build recycling plants or even landfill sites where you know where you're not actually doing any recycling. So we've glanced over that. But there's quite a lot of plastics at the moment that can't be made in this circular fashion. And I think what the UN really wants to try and do is in the next 10, 20 years, try and phase out all of those different plastics that require basically to be disposed of uh, either in sort of burning or in landfill. And basically, any time they're sort of just throwing it away, landfill or burning it, then we are getting basically lots of sort of extra chemicals released into the system. And that is a good idea because we we desperately want to try and get rid of all these nasty things. I, I mentioned, you know, when you drink water, uh, some of these bottles used to contain phthalates and these were really good chemicals uh, and they, they used to do wonderful things to your human health and uh, basically uh, not do you a lot of good at all. No, well, it's the idea, you know, you've um, probably most everybody here has uh, probably heard of when they say, ah, this plastic container is booper free. And the answer is that because that was a booper, is a, a, not a class of chemical, but it is a chemical that has been found to um, be detrimental to one's health. And so, ah, yes, we, our plastic is now booper free. That's what they, you know, manufacturers are claiming. And that's great. Yeah, it, uh, I, I never worry when they tell me this, it hasn't got this. It's when they to say it doesn't have, you know, something else or, you know, you, you are you replacing one bad thing with another? With two not so bad things. Yes, that's the problem. And so basically we're, we're looking at if we can get rid of all of these things, we can then make plastics more circular, then basically they can be reused over and over and over again, and this is brilliant. I was horrified when I was reading that there are more than 13,000 different chemicals in all the different plastics, and only half of those, Paul, have actually been screened for properties that would make them hazardous to people. So, you know, it's, it's, it's frightening to think that sort of, you know, 3,200 of the 7,000 screen chemicals have been identified as chemicals of concern. That, that, that sort of worries me, you know, in regards to that's quite a lot of chemicals not to be screened. But at the same time, you've got to look at the, sort of the idea they're trying to find similar chemicals. And unfortunately, you, you're trying to something to do a job. Yeah, you know, let's take a hammer, you know, hammer a nail in. You know, and you're doing saying, well, we can't hammer the nail, let's screw it in. Well, surely screwing it is, has got the same problems. So let's, you know, you need something like an adhesive now. You know, they're, they're trying all sorts of things. And some things work and some things don't. So you know, that, that's the idea that way yeah. of going through. Because uh, some of these chemicals have got lovely names. And I'm not going to 
tell you all those lovely names because they're grouped together and they're called forever chemicals. Oh. Yeah. Chemicals that basically just do not go away. And these have got some lovely names like PBDEs and PCBs and uh, other ones, PFASs. Yeah. Got lovely names. And uh, I'm not trying to worry anyone about trying to do those, except when we look at something, like we buy some food and we eat the food, Basically, in the container, on the container, it tells you what the food contains. It says it's so much protein, so much carbohydrates. But what it doesn't do, it doesn't tell you that this plastic that this food is in contains these chemicals. And, of course, you're getting those free, aren't you? Well, yes, this is the whole crux of the whole problem. And But this is where, yeah, the, the, this roadmap that they've set out with that the UN want to do and is an attempt to get people to start doing these sort of those sorts of things, you know, putting things. And they were talking about how, with their roadmap, if these not started now, obviously any delay could basically means a, a huge amount of uh, not an environmental cost. It's one of those things. Oh, I think it is really environmental cost. But think, yeah, yeah, I'm more talking, say, the landfill costs yeah. as opposed to truly, uh, you know, environmental costs. You know, because it's have a landfill. And they were saying if we delay this the, this roadmap by five years, they said eight million metric tons of plastic, uh, of course, would be new created um, still by the year 2040. So that's more five years which is a horrific amount of plastic that we are using and it, 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 one of the goals is of course is who's using all the plastic where is all the plastic going and unfortunately it's actually the economic world as opposed to the, the third world the less economically developed and once again the problem is saying the low economic weight um countries are saying we don't use that much plastic so therefore it's not our fault so yeah and we, we're getting all the waste and all the problems with it so it's one of those things where that's what they're looking at moaning and sort of doing but this is the first thing that of course uh developed countries could actually start doing and showcase and then basically help the less developed move forward because they want to basically by doing this a lovely roadmap the UN proposed that they could create over 700,000 new jobs. And that's new jobs. And that they said, however, and it will improve the livelihood of millions. Because, of course, at a, say, recycling plant, you're not having to, you know, you're not incinerating all these chemicals and all these plastics. And so you're not ha receiving all these toxic fumes. And so your health, as in the, the your worker, the worker's health, is so much, I'm not, I'm not saying better, that's the wrong way to describe. Not know, as bad. Not yes. as bad. Oh, yeah, improving the livelihood is what they're, 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 they're saying. Because, of course, yeah, with all this money saved, technically they say, you know, they say they could um, significantly improve the, income of these workers because obviously one of the dumb things they're not working in these poor economic sites as in these poor environmental hazardous areas they're actually being paid elsewhere they're not saying they're going to raise the money unfortunately they're just merely saying they won't be poisoned at work or honey or as much or as much <laughs> yeah it, it, the silly yeah. things are sort of you'll have the normal hazards as opposed to getting hazard pay that, that there's there's an awful lot of poisonous chemicals when we actually do incinerate, but there's also the amount of energy we have to put into to try and incinerate plastics. And it's just not a runner. And this is what the UN want to try and get rid of, this idea of pyrolysis and gasification. They require huge amounts of energy to try and get rid of these chemicals you know they're trying to turn perhaps some of these plastics into well i suppose oil and fuel but 
basically, this is really not a goer. And we want to try and stop these things. Basically, in the next 10 years, they want to try and get rid of many of these plastics so that the ones that we are now going to be producing will be able to be recycled in a much better way rather than by burning. And that's that's not a bad idea. No, it, it, it's one of those things where that, that's where they're going. And they're saying throughout all this, of course, is new opportunities um, for this. Um, they're not saying that investment is requ- isn't required in some of these. You know, they say, you know, boring things, of course, is that recycling plants aren't the most prettiest surely they should be getting be getting investment where they aren't and it's one of those deemed that perhaps a better use not use case but better investment plan and make sort of recycling a very friendly recycle as in let's say you constantly need a recycling plant so if you invest in it that's a constant source of money you see and so they want part of the framework is actually to help the not the finance side of the whole problem but they can sort of well a recycling plant's gonna be here for the next 25 years if you invest you get a income and it's an income of 25 years it's a long-term income as opposed to being very sort of let's make money now quick school scheme and it is that idea of sort of helping not making investment easier, but sort of making invest in investing in this circular economy more exciting, more appealing, making it sort of well, that's the way we're going, and sort of you could be jumping, you know, if you're a, a first time investor or a first, uh, a, you know, you jump aboard it first, whatever the term is, you know, look at all the benefits you can get in, you know, and they basically are sort of wanting people to, uh, Prior, yeah, prioritize sort of those sort of situations to basically start and get everybody get forward and hoping that of course new plastics and new hopefully plastic uh, cr- uh methods can be able to create more extra business opportunities like let's say you taking your water bottle let's say you build your uh uh, water, uh, basically, uh, not a fountain, but sort of like a water fountain where you get to refill bottles and you make a basically a, a water dispenser for bottles. You see, you know, yeah. you're not paying for the water, but there's a new business where you built the little basically water spout. So, there, there are, there are three parts, aren't there, to this circularity? The they call them the three market shifts reuse, which we've talked about. Try to reuse things, recycle things. So basically we can try and make sure that various plastics we use can be sort of turned into new products. But the bit that you're now getting on to, Paul, there is this idea of reorientate and diversify. Rather than using plastics, can we find other ways of doing what we want to do trying to basically shape the market for different plastic alternatives basically so we don't need to use plastics by having a different system like you know if we had plenty of water fountains everywhere no one would need to bother with carrying bottled water and i'm not a great fan of bottled water because well it does contain quite a lot of bacteria but i, I, I go on that and say but effectively if we're not you're not storing as much water on it all the time is the plastic leaking and then you're just refilling it when you need to um yeah but there's other ideas all around sort of this this um reorientation of these things and it is the idea of course is you know going back and looking at the history what do we use before plastic? And this is one of those dumb things, of course, is, you know, you think previously we used to have um, fish and chips, right? And fish and chips usually came from the newspaper from that day because it was just, you know, 
paper because there was no lovely polystyrene tray to throw it in. You know, and the answer is, could we not go back to using the newspaper, you know, as opposed to having sort of, you know, a nice polystyrene plastic sort of container for these things? And I said, oh, yeah, but newspaper didn't really insulate it from the heat. I'm going like, well, you know, it depends on what's the case of problem of that. You know, the answer is it did, but not as effectively as the plastic. And can we find other ways of trying to do this? So, yeah, maybe there are better and other ways of trying to do things. Um, I know when we used to have fish and chips, you used to go out and you get them, and you sort of took them home, and often they were cold by the time you got them home. And that's why you had them in newspaper, try and keep them a bit warmer. But let's face it, a lot of people have microwaves. So you could get your fish and chips and you could just microwave them when you get them home. Oh, that's ready-made meals, isn't it? Okay, so yes. But we've got necessarily other ways of trying to look at different things. So... I was just having a look at which camera I was on there. So I've, I've lost the screen. <laughs> right, anyway, so basically we, we've got to think about what we're going to try and do. Can we do things differently to get rid of plastics? Can we, if we are using re plastics, can we just recycle them when we've actually finished using them? And can we keep reusing them again and again and again. Uh, this is what's happened with the plastic bags that you buy in shops. Yes, it, 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 it can, you know, we're looking at all these scenarios and things. They're saying we've already done them, you know, the, the, the technically the bag for life, you know, that's a very good sort of idea that, you know, we're throwing away single-use bags or, or these really plastic bags for not stiffer bags, bags that can be constantly reused. And so, therefore, you know, the life cycle of sort of the bag, you know, they've served their purpose. How many bag, how many times your groceries have been contained in these bags? And then if some, if they, the bag breaks, well, then it's not a big deal. And in theory, if it's made of better recyclable material, then it's no bother throwing it away or, more importantly, throwing it to be recycled. It can actually be more useful to look at sort of, you know, it's done its job. It you know, contains, you know, 4,000 trips of groceries and that it's just, you know, it's that's where it's end of its life. And so there is no shame in recycling it. It's, it's an, a very much a attitude problem to all these sort of things. One, one of the problems we all have, we every, everyone wants something new. We don't want the old ones. But perhaps we need to change society's view that walking around with one of these old bags, you sort of, well, perhaps like the old fighters in the World War, they used to have little sort of markings on them to say how many you chop down. So maybe we want on our recycled bags little ticks to say how many times you've reused this. Yeah. yeah, could be, could be interesting. Yes, but it, it's changing people's view on things. It's changing how you look at plastics. Are plastics a good thing, or are they a bad thing? The answer is they're neither. It's just how you use them that makes all the difference. So whenever you go out and you get something that's plastic think reuse when you've reused it as much as you can then recycle it and by doing that you're reorientating yourself, yourself. yes, yes. All, all good art all the system yes yeah good acronyms we we can do this and it shouldn't be a problem it's just basically a little bit more education required and changing our outlook on life you've been listening to the going green podcast looking at recycling again and 
hopefully we'll be back next week with another topic on going green. Until then, it's goodbye from me. And a goodbye from me. Bye-bye. Bye.